Okay. Um, next Wednesday, February 3rd, University of Vermont faculty, students, alumni, and community supporters are coming together for a day-long online teach-in in the liberal arts um, called uh, the liberal arts at UVM, defund, defending our students' educations against defunding. And one class that will be offered that day uh, will be the alternative full professor lectures uh, taught by professors Felicia Kornblue and Helen Scott. And um, I'm going to pause here just a moment because I uh, want to make sure I am displaying the correct screen. And um, now I want to thank um, Felicia and Helen for joining me today. And uh, I also want to say congratulations on your promotions from associate professor to full professor. I understand that the College of Arts and Sciences Dean's Office invited you to deliver lectures to celebrate your promotions, and you have declined to do so. And so I wondered if you could say more about why? Well, I, I'd like to start by saying that initially I happily said yes, I would, I would love to be part of the full professor lecture series. Uh, I was thrilled at the concept. I have been to many of them in the past. Uh, I've taught at UVM for more than 20 years. I've poured my heart and soul into my teaching and service and research. And this was one of the rare opportunities to be recognized and to publicly celebrate that work. So I was enthusiastic about it. But then we subsequently learned that the College of Arts and Sciences is planning these draconian cuts, um, as people I'm sure will have heard, cutting more than 25, terminating more than 25 programs, actually shuttering the departments of religion geology and classics. Um, and then in addition, they, they announced that they were terminating three very valued, highly valued senior lecturers, including my, my esteemed colleague, Jamie Williamson. Jamie just recently went through a rigorous review process and came out with flying colors. His department and the college agreed that he is exceptional in all of the categories of his work. He's a lecturer who teaches four courses a semester and he still managed to publish a book. Uh, he's, a, he's loved by his students. He's the only person who teaches Native American literature. And for me, the idea of standing up and being celebrated for my achievements while my colleague who deserves to be lauded and celebrated has been fired. He was told that he was fired just before Christmas. I had no appetite for a public celebration of my work and I wanted instead to do everything that I could to reverse these cuts. I feel very much the same way and for me if nothing else I wanted to say that this is not business as usual. You know, ordinarily, we like to think at the university that what we're doing is we're engaged in a community dedicated to serious inquiry um, in our teaching, in our classrooms, and in our research. And to achieve the level of full professor means um, to have gone a, a far way down that road toward pursuing ind an independent research program. And or, so ordinarily, um, the university is designed to, to promote and to celebrate that work. Um, but what's happening right now in the university and within the college in which I teach, the College of Arts and Sciences, is a derogation of that work. It's a, it's a diminution of the value that's placed on that work. So it seemed like, um, it seemed bizarre in a way for me to step forward and pretend that the college and the university are still fundamentally valuing that work of uh, serious research inquiry and, and dedicated teaching um, when the evidence from the shuttering of the programs and, um, and the treatment of some of our colleagues is the reverse. And I'll just add in particular, 
um, there is a, a very, very valued colleague in the Department of History in my department who works in a very different field than I do, but he's one of my, um, one of the people that I discuss my work with and one of the people who challenges me and who has, you know, has helped me produce the work I've produced, in addition to the fact that he himself is a very productive researcher as well as being an incredibly valued member of our teaching staff. So I wanted to say, this is not a normal time and the institution that's around us is not valuing uh, what it claims it values when it puts forward a full professor lecture series. Okay. And um, so next week for the teach-in, you'll be using your class uh, to deliver an alternative lecture uh, than you would have um, given in this celebration. And I wondered if you might uh, just um, preview a little bit the major um, themes um, or approach you'll be taking, or if it's building on you know, exactly the situation you've just laid out now. Well, my, my starting point comes out of the research that I would have talked about in the full professor lecture. Uh, my promotion was partly based on a book that I just published last year called um, Shakespeare's Tempest and Capitalism, The Storm of History, um, and then also work that is ongoing that I do, which is research on the great Polish revolutionary Rosa Luxemburg. Um, the book on Shakespeare is very much drawing on contemporary scholarship that calls on English departments to decolonize, uh, to look at the history of colonialism, the continuation of racism, imperialism, uh, and the various inequities of global capitalism, and to recognize that literature is embedded in these systems and that we as conscientious scholars and teachers need to engage with this, this history. Um, I think that the, the, the announced cuts will make it much harder for any of us to engage in that work of decolonizing the university. The, the consequences for efforts to diversity, equity, inclusion and social justice will be undermined. How can, you, how can you shutter a religion department in an era of rising Islamophobia and, is, and, and um, anti-Semitism? Um, it, is, it is just irresponsible. Um, similarly, uh, the, there is a, pro, a plan to cut the Latin, Latin American and Caribbean studies program, which again, it's a moment when there are crises in Latin America causing unprecedented numbers of refugees who are being turned away from entry into the US. We need to understand more about Latin American and, and Caribbean culture and history in order to understand what's going on politically, what's happening in the world. So, um, and then of course, languages, you know, the, these cuts would undermine um, our ability to teach the range of world languages. Again, absolutely crucial for understanding the great diversity of our globe is the many languages that people speak. So um, that's what I will be focusing on, the, the, the important project of expanding our ability to enable diversity, equity, inclusion. This is a time not to undermine the efforts that are already there. You know, it's a time to be building on them. Uh, and then just briefly, my ongoing research in, into um, the life and works of Rosa Luxemburg, I'm also going to draw on because Luxemburg was herself a great teacher as well as a principled revolutionary. And she always stood up for social justice and she never shied away from a battle and she always spoke truth to power. And I want to stand in the path of, of somebody like that. And that means, you know, standing with my, my colleagues and, and students and community to defend the values that we hold dear. Yeah, for me, another reason not to give a traditional full professor lecture this year um, is that my research 
um, brings to the fore some of the same um, hypocrisies and ironies that we see at the university now. And I think it would sort of expose me um, as, uh, as a hypocrite if I were to kind of talk, talk, talk um, about my research um, without acknowledging what's going on here. Um, the book that I published in 2018 with my colleague, uh, political scientist Gwendolyn Mink, is about the welfare reform law of 1996 that was passed as a bipartisan measure between uh, President Bill Clinton and a Republican controlled US Congress. And um, what that book is about um, narrowly is a particular uh, program that is was supposed to be an anti poverty program, but instead became a program that generated greater poverty, um, greater vulnerability and precariousness or precarity for low income women in particular, um, low income women raising children at the economic margins, many of them victims of domestic violence, um, and virtually all of them victims of other uh, devastating systems of oppression in our society. And um, and the reason that this reminds me somewhat of what's happening now is that this was this would not have been possible if it, if it had not been for self-professed liberals and Democrats and even some self-professed feminists who um, who agreed to at least be silent and um, in the case of President Clinton to promote this devastating law. And, um, and I think we see similar dynamics at UVM and in the state of Vermont, um, the university and the state have a somewhat undeserved reputation for extreme liberalism. And I think that the university rides on that reputation to a great degree and is willing to invest in certain kinds of cosmetic pseudo environmental or pseudo equity oriented um, programs, but where the rubber hits the road which is to say, are we going to uh, maintain a robust faculty that is well compensated? Are we going to are we going to um, enable students to really learn about um, about what's happening in the world? You know that then the university seems to back away from its its apparent or facial um, liberal commitments, and so I see a similar kind of hypocrisy here locally at UVM. Um, to the kind of hypocrisy that I viewed at the national level from the National Democratic Party um, in the 1990s and going forward, um, because it wasn't just the 90s. Um, the, the mainstream Democratic Party has never renounced this law and has never reversed it um, in the now 25 years um, since it was passed. So, um, so I really wanna make that point. Um, and ongoingly in terms of my research, I'm very interested in looking at uh, liberal and feminist hypocrisy and the points at which um, the apparent commitments of some of our liberal and feminist movements are not respected and um, and where um, where instead old hierarchies of race and class reassert themselves and where people who think of themselves as great liberals give themselves a pass you know when they could be kind of administrative salaries which are which are very high at the University of Vermont um, where they could be cutting um, other um, other priorities and there's plenty where there's plenty of money actually available at the University of Vermont and they choose to cut the the most low paid the most hardworking um, faculty members and some of the most critical departments and programs I wanna thank you both for this um, preview and also for standing up to say that these are not normal times at the University of Vermont. It should not be business as usual while they are um, cutting away the um, foundations and the means for teaching, research, scholarship, social justice. And next Wednesday, we very much hope it will not be business as usual um, at UVM and that the entire campus will tune in to the teach-in, including to uh, your class on Wednesday morning. So thank you both. I'm going to toggle over to the live stream now and turn it off. And, um, uh, but I'm looking forward to uh, next Wednesday seeing you again. Thank you. Thank you.